In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. As we gather together today, we celebrate two great luminaries of the Orthodox faith. For the seven ecumenical councils, these two men were the predominant figures of two of the councils. In the first ecumenical council, Saint Athanasius, though only a deacon to the Patriarch of Alexandria, proved to be the most stalwart defender of orthodoxy. And this is saying a lot, considering he shared the stage with great saints, such as Saint Spiridon and Saint Nicholas, among the 300 other orthodox fathers. Saint Athanasius, when he was 20 years old, composed his treatises on the incarnation of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In it, he answers a question that is something that all of us strive to find out. What is the meaning of life? And he answers it by saying, God became man so that man could become like God. That is to say, the purpose of our life is to become like our Lord and Savior. In the gospel that you heard today when Jesus Christ said, not one yota will be changed from the law. This was in direct reference to this first ecumenical council in which the arch-heretic Arius, because he was trying to prove that Jesus Christ was a creature, not co-equal, not begotten, not eternal, not light of light, true God of true God of the same essence as God the Father. Rather, for that phrase of the same essence, homoousios, strove to put a yota in there as a type of compromise, because it would change homoousios to homoousios, which would mean similar, that Jesus Christ is similar to God the Father in essence. And of course, St. Athanasius and the fathers of the First Ecumenical Council would not hear of it. In the Third Ecumenical Council, the Council of Ephesus, St. Cyril of Alexandria fought against the heresies of Nestorius, which sought to, again, humanize Christ to a point where his divinity is lost. And Nestorius wished to say that the Virgin Mary should be called Christotokos, the bearer of Christ. But Saint Cyril, along with the fathers of this council, argued that the Virgin Mary must indeed be called Theotokos, the bearer of God, for she bore in her womb the uncontainable God, for Jesus Christ from the moment the Holy Spirit conceived in her, was truly divine, truly full God, uncontainable, somehow contained in the Virgin Mother. These two great saints, these theological luminaries, did not live their lives in peace or simplicity. Of the more than 50 years of St. Athanasius' reign as the Patriarch of Alexandria, Seventeen of those years were in exile, and during one of those periods of exiles, the emperor, Julian the Apostate, desired to have him killed. But Saint Athanasius never lost heart and always strove hard to work for his people. Indeed, the church says that he strove so hard for the Eastern Empire that it was not until Saint Basil rose in Caesarea that he said, now the church is in good hands and I can step back. Likewise, St. Cyril of Alexandria fought for years against the doctrines that were counter to the Orthodox. My beloved brothers and sisters in Christ, as the Gospel says, any who teaches men the righteousness of God is called great in the kingdom of heaven. These two men are indeed great. Let us follow after their great example. To all those who have the name Cyril and all those who are named Saint, after named after Saint Athanasius, happy name day, Pronio Pola, 
May their intercession and example lead us, guide us, and fill us.